is commonly thought that eating too many carbohydrates is bad for your health. Some longevity gurus even say that every single time you raise your insulin levels, you're aging much faster. And the key to living longer and slowing down aging is to keep your insulin levels as low as possible. Is it true? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about the effects of insulin and the role of insulin in aging. And whether or not eating more carbohydrates or raising insulin levels is associated with accelerated aging and shorter lifespans. Do it! Let's start with some of the fundamental roles and evolutionarily conserved mechanisms of insulin on aging and longevity. The insulin and insulin-like growth factor IGF-1 signaling or IIS pathway which connects insulin with insulin-like growth factor 1 is actually one of the more like oldest and one of the most conserved evolutionary pathways that is associated with uh, longevity and the speed of which the organism uh, ages and lives. Insulin and IGF-1 both connect with the mechanistic target of rapamycin or mTOR which uh, is a growth pathway in the body that promotes cellular replication, senescence and uh, yeah just in excess it is associated with aging that's pretty you know uh, evident by now. Things that raise mTOR are proteins and amino acids but through the insulin and IGF-1 pathways carbohydrates can also activate the mTOR pathway which in theory at least in mechanistically has been found to uh, shorten lifespans of like model organisms like different kinds of yeast, fruit flies and uh, rodents. There's no clear evidence to suggest that mTOR expression would accelerate aging or shorten lifespan in humans, but it is plausible that excess mTOR activation or this dysfunctional chronic mTOR activation may promote the growth of some malignancies or tumors. In these fruit flies, mutations in the Chico pathway, which is kind of the analogous to the insulin pathway in humans, uh, they found that the median lifespan can now be up to 48% longer. And in C. elegans or uh, roundworms, pretty much insulin uh, blocks some of the uh, longevity promoting factors like SKN1. The mice who lack the insulin receptor in the adipose tissue, they have about 18% uh, longer lifespan on average. Cool. And interestingly enough, in humans who have these uh, mutations in the insulin like growth factor 1 receptor, they apparently also live slightly longer, so the centenarians. However, when you look at some actual association studies in humans then uh, they do actually find that the low levels of IGF-1 are also associated with increased mortality and uh, the same applies to too high uh, IGF-1 levels. Both low and high IGF-1 concentrations are associated with increased mortality in the general population. So too high IGF-1 levels may increase the risk of cancer and malignancies and usually if you have like diabetes and metabolic syndrome then your IGF-1 levels are also somewhat higher because you know you're uh, with higher blood sugar levels and you spike your insulin levels uh, much more. But if you have too low IGF-1 levels then uh, that usually increases the risk of uh, osteoporosis and uh, hip fractures and those kind of things. So if you have not enough IGF-1 levels then you're just going to be too frail. And that is also a very important uh, thing to note. Yeah, like if you maybe suppress your insulin and IGF-1 levels, then it may have like a pro-longevity on the one hand, but on the other hand, you may also increase the risk of your mortality uh, because of uh, being too frail and losing your muscle. So muscle tissue is obviously very important for slowing down aging and living longer. People who have less muscle, their longevity tends to be shorter and people with adequate amounts of muscle mass and muscle strength then they generally live much longer than uh, their peers. So yes, incident and IGF-1 levels are associated with aging and shorter lifespans in these model organisms like yeast, uh, roundworms, uh, fruit flies, mice, etc. But that doesn't mean that it's going to translate over into humans because humans obviously have a much different metabolism and uh, some of the things, there may be trade-offs that uh, aren't worth it for humans either. When it comes to humans, then we have to look at the actual outcomes and what does the epidemiology say and what does the actual clinical trials say. So first off, diabetes is clearly associated with accelerated aging and shorter lifespans. Uh, people who have diabetes can live up to 13 years or 14 years shorter than people who don't have diabetes. There's many reasons why people get diabetes, but the root cause or the root mechanism and physiology of diabetes is insulin resistance and improper glucose tolerance. There are many things that contribute to that glucose intolerance and insulin resistance. You can get diabetes by eating too much sugar, you can get diabetes by just uh, hyperinsulinemia, and you can also get diabetes by eating too much fat and just too much calories in general. So it's not always eating too many carbohydrates and raising insulin that causes insulin resistance and diabetes. There are even genetic variables like autoimmune disorders that cause diabetes. To an ice cream, an apple pie and diabetes. Now there are some studies that do find that higher carbohydrate intake is associated with 
increased mortality risk. And that probably has to do with the fact that, you know, eating excess com- carbohydrates and being insulin resistant probably also contributes to the increased death from diabetes and insulin resistance or cardiovascular disease that you get. But there are also other studies that find a lower carbohydrate intake is associated with increased mortality. So this 2018 meta-analysis with about 15,000 adults and a 25-year follow-up found that uh, the carbohydrate intake and mortality followed this U-shape curve or U-shape association with both low and high carbohydrate intake being associated with increased uh, mortality. Both high and low percentage of carbohydrate diets were associated with increased mortality with minimal risk observed at 50 to 55 percent carbohydrate intake this is still like an association study so people who eat too many carbohydrates probably get them from very like this processed sources and the same applies to low carbohydrate diets they might be eating a diet that is just uh, very processed and with minimal amounts of these healthy whole food fiber sources. So the food quality matters a lot and the actual health of the individual matters as well. If you don't have any visible symptoms of diabetes, insulin resistance, heart disease or hypertension or anything like that, then uh, you don't probably have any increased risk. It's not that the diet itself is immediately going to give you some sort of a disease or shorten your lifespan. It's more like what's the actual outcome of the diet you follow. Is your diet making you insulin resistant? Is your diet making you gain weight? Is your diet keeping you at a too high BMI and a too high body fat percentage? So based on the human epidemiology studies, it's hard to say that insulin or um, you know carbohydrates themselves shorten lifespan or increase your aging. It's definitely true that diabetes, insulin resistance, heart disease, all those things and glucose intolerance will definitely shorten your lifespan and accelerate aging. But if you don't ever get diabetes, even if you're eating a very high carb diet, then chances are it's not aging you faster. So the actual outcome is obviously much more important. Some of the countries with the highest life expectancy in the world follow a relatively higher carb intake. You know, Hong Kong, Japan, Macau, these are all all South Asian and, uh, you know, East Asian countries that eat a lot of rice and they have relatively higher carb intake compared to some other countries in the world. So based on this, it's hard to say that insulin or carbohydrates would make you like shorten your lifespan or make you age faster as long as you don't develop diabetes. So the total amount of carbohydrates isn't that important as the individual who is practicing it and what's the actual metabolic outcomes, in my opinion. And this uh, 2023, and they found that uh, a certain percentage of macronutrients was associated with a lower risk of mortality. A high calorie diet composed of moderately high protein, 20%, moderate fat, 30%, and moderate carbohydrate, 50%, was associated with the highest mortality risk. So this is interesting. Then the lowest risk was observed in two separate regions consisting of one A higher protein, 30%, higher carbohydrate, 60%, and lower fat levels, 10%. Or the second uh, diet was lower protein, 10%, moderate carbohydrate, 45%, and higher fat levels, 45%. So this is uh, obviously not low-carb diet. Uh, but it uh, it restricts some aspects of protein intake. The other group that was with the lowest risk of mortality was actually a high-protein diet, 30%, but it also was a higher carbohydrate diet with 60% and actually like a low fat diet of 10%. So these two groups were associated with the lowest risk of mortality compared to a higher calorie diet composed of moderate protein, 20%, moderate fat, 30%, and moderate carb, 50%, was associated with the highest mortality risk. Now, this is an association study. Again, we don't know necessarily what was the reason or what the actual foods these people ate. Uh, But, you know, when you look at the macros of this the uh, 20% protein, 30% fat, and 50% carbs, then that sounds very <laughs> that sounds very similar to like the standard American diet. So the standard American diet, the processed food diet, generally is uh, low in protein. So it, I mean, it has some protein from like the hot dogs and the, the buns and stuff like that. You get 20% protein probably, 30% fat, and 50% carbs. I mean, that makes sense. If I were to you know guesstimate the macros of a standard American diet, this um, like TV dinner diet, <laughs> then that would make sense. And uh, when you look at the macros of the higher protein diet or the uh, higher protein 30 percent higher carb 60 percent and lower fat 10 percent diet and then then that is very similar to like this japanese uh, rice diet i mean japanese aren't eating low protein for sure they're eating uh, adequate amount of protein from fish and stuff like that but they're also eating high carb and lastly the 10 percent and moderate carb and higher fat levels 
Um, I'm not sure, I don't recall any diet like this, uh, but it's uh, certainly, you know, the, the, like the longevity benefits probably may come from like the protein restriction in some sense. So in conclusion, in animal studies, in uh, model organisms, excess insulin and IGOP-1 levels mechanistically are associated with aging and shorter lifespans. But in humans, there doesn't appear to be any direct evidence to suggest that spiking your insulin is going to make you age faster or shorten the lifespan. If, if anything, then it's actually the opposite most of the countries with the highest life expectancy and the greatest longevity actually eat a relatively high amounts of carbohydrates and from the last study that we talked about then one of the studies that was associated with the lowest risk of mortality was actually a high carb uh, diet with 60 percent of the calories coming from uh, carbohydrates so whatever the diet that gives you insulin resistance is going to shorten your lifespan that's pretty clear if you are insulin sensitive you have low body fat percentage you're fit you're active and your blood sugar levels are good then there's no reason to think that uh, eating more carbohydrates would accelerate your aging or shorten your lifespan if anything then it's the opposite it's a trap. so personally what i do is i try to be mindful of my total carbohydrate intake i try to be mindful of uh, raising my blood sugar levels and i don't want to like just keep my blood sugar and insulin levels elevated uh, all throughout the day. I do practice time to eating that uh, definitely keeps my blood sugar and insulin levels uh, very low for the most of the day. But I do eat carbohydrates, especially around my workouts. And on some days I may even eat like 200 or 250 grams of carbohydrates per day on the, like heavier workout days. And my blood sugar is perfect. My hemoglobin A1C is uh, perfect. And my fasting insulin levels are perfect. I have no, <laughs> I have no signs of metabolic syndrome, no no signs of insulin resistance the opposite i'm very insulin sensitive i'm very low body fat and i feel great so what i recommend you do is just figure out your carbohydrate tolerance you need to know your blood sugar levels you need to you know monitor how does different foods affect your blood sugar levels and what's your degree of insulin resistance if you do want to slow down aging and live longer then i am looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered